conservation of energy. When you watch a pendulum, it seems like it'll just keep going back and forth forever. Well, we know that it won't keep going back and forth forever, but it'll go back and forth for a long time. Conservation of energy uh, in a conservative system, this is called a conservative system, uh, tells us why a pendulum will go back and forth for a long time uh, and seeming to go forever. That's because the total energy in the system is made up of two parts, the potential energy and the kinetic energy, and those two parts remain relatively constant in a conservative system. So the law of conservation of energy states that the total energy in a closed and isolated system remains constant. And that's really what this equation is telling us right here. And so a pendulum keeps going back and forth because the energy keeps sloshing back and forth and transferring back and forth between potential and kinetic energy. So with a pendulum, you start with potential energy, and then that'll turn into kinetic energy, back to potential, back to kinetic, and then back to potential and vice versa as it keeps swinging back and forth. It will never go higher than the original height unless you've pushed on it and added more work. Um, so you can trust physics here, but it still takes a lot of courage. So let's look at this in a diagram form. This is our law of conservation of energy. The total energy is equal to potential plus kinetic. At the top, when the pendulum was raised up, we did work to raise it to this point, the energy is all potential. It's not moving for an instant right here. So there's no kinetic energy and it's all potential. As the pendulum starts to fall, that potential energy starts to turn into kinetic energy. So the potential dies down and the kinetic builds up. Again, as it falls further, the potential is dying down more, the kinetic's building up. And then when you get to the bottom of its arc, all of the energy is kinetic. It can't fall any further, and therefore there's no more potential left. And all the energy is kinetic, but it has inertia. And so its momentum will carry it on, its inertia will carry it on, but now the kinetic starts dumping back into potential and it starts to build up potential as it ra uh, raises on the other side. Again, less kinetic and more potential as it's rising up and it's slowing down. And then when you get to the other side over here, for an instant it stops, there's no more kinetic and it's all potential. But what's true is the total energy Notice the total energy is remaining the same. The potential and kinetic are changing, but their sum adds back up to the total energy throughout. So a diagram that we can show and copy down in your notes would look something like this. There's maximum potential energy at the top and that is the total energy. And then when it falls down, if it's halfway down, then you're gonna get, you're gonna get half of the maximums for each of the potential and kinetic, half and half will give you the total energy when it's halfway down. When it's halfway down, we mean height-wise. So this height to here is equal to this height right there. And that's when you're gonna get half and half giving you the total energy. When it gets down to the bottom, it's going the fastest, and that's where it has maximum kinetic energy. Then when it climbs up the other side, when you're halfway vertically up, you have half and half. And then when you get to the other side over here, all of the energy is potential again, and a maximum potential. So let's add some numbers to this and do a little calculation. So the same exact situation, but now let's say that the pendulum was raised 24 centimeters or 0.24 meters, and that's raised from this bottom reference level where the height is equal to zero, and so that's a vertical height. If we have that vertical height, we can calculate that maximum potential energy. Down here we'll do the calculation. Potential energy due to gravity is equal to mgh. And this is going to be the maximum potential energy if this is the maximum height of 0.24 meters. The uh, pendulum itself right here has a uh, mass of 0.4 
kilograms. So 0.4 kilograms times 9.8 times 0.24 is 0.94 joules. So that's the energy up at the top. Now as this pendulum falls, when it's fallen halfway, we know that the 0.94 joules will have distributed half to potential and half to kinetic. It's half potential because it still has half way to fall. And it's half kinetic because it's picked up speed. Now, once it continues to fall and gets down to this bottom level, even if we don't know the speed, we can calculate the kinetic energy. We don't have to know the velocity for using the equation 1 half mv squared, because instead we can use our conservation of energy equation. Since we know at the bottom there is no more potential left, the total energy, which we started with of 0.94 joules, since this is zero, has to all be kinetic energy. And that's what we have here. So all of this 0.94 joules at the beginning, total energy is still the total energy, but now it's turned into the maximum kinetic energy. Of course, the inertia keeps the ball going. And when it's over here, you have half and half again, or 0.47 and 0.47. And when you get to this other side, you're back to having all 0.94 joules uh, be potential energy on this side. So let's check out a simulation of this pendulum and uh, the FET uh, simulations from the University of Colorado do a great job of allowing us to simulate um, these uh, situations. They're very similar to real life kind of situations. So I'm gonna pull the pendulum back. Let's pull it back to right there. Whoa, and we'll let it go. And it's already going. And notice that it keeps coming back to that same place and it keeps coming back to this same place over here and sloshing energy back and forth, going from uh, potential to kinetic to potential back to kinetic, and it sloshes back and forth, and you can see that over here. The kinetic energy is going up and down, the poten potential energy is going up and down, and the total energy, look at that, the total energy remains constant. It's staying at the same level. Now, if you look, the green and the blue are trading places, because what part of the total uh, is uh, varying between the potential and the kinetic. But what's true is the total energy is remaining the same. So if I pause this at any point, right there, right. And when I paused it, notice that if I have this much kinetic and this much potential, when I add those two together, the total energy is this much. If I let it run a little while longer and stop it at some other point in time, now I have more kinetic uh, happening at this instant and less potential, but when we put those two chunks together, the total energy remains the same. This is happening pretty fast, so I'm gonna slow it down to one quarter time and you can kind of watch this blend back and forth as we go. So let's start over here at the top and it's all blue, all potential, that potential is turning into kinetic and down at the very bottom, boom, all kinetic and then back over here, all potential. So you can just watch this slosh back and forth and uh, you can see how the potential and kinetic energy continue to add up to the total energy. Pretty cool. Let's go back to Dan and uh, let's uh, see how the bowling ball situation also shows conservation of energy in a conservative system. When we raise the bowling ball up here, we gave the system energy and that energy is all potential at the top and Dan's concerned. Now as the bowling ball starts to fall, that potential energy starts to die down. The kinetic energy though starts to build up so that the total energy really is staying the same. And again, as it falls further, less potential but more kinetic. Ooh, but now less potential but more kinetic and now it's the kinetic is actually more than potential. And then here again, more kinetic, less potential, more kinetic, less potential, more kinetic, barely any potential left. Look at that, hardly any potential left, almost all kinetic. The kinetic is almost equal to the total energy. And then, boom, what? Where did the energy go? Oh, Dan knows the energy went into his foot. And if you could ask the bowling ball, the bowling ball would say that it's vibrating a little bit too. So Dan's foot is hurting and the bowling ball is vibrating. 
that's a topic for another day when we look at non-conservative systems. Right now we just want to look at the conservative system part while the ball was falling. So again, the total energy at the top was all potential, and we could calculate that if we know the mass of the bowling ball, the acceleration due to gravity, and the height of the bowling ball. And when we plug all those in, like we'd previously done in another video, we get 71 joules of potential energy. Now as the ball falls, that potential energy starts turning into kinetic energy. Halfway down, notice that you'd have half of 71 is potential, and half the other half of 71 is turned into kinetic. You get half and half, halfway down. And then at the very bottom here, the instant before it hits his foot, uh, so this is the very instant before it hits the foot, he hasn't hit his foot yet, all of the energy has gone from potential into kinetic, and it's 71 joules of kinetic energy at the bottom. But the total energy remained the same. The total energy was always 71 joules. I just had to see Dan one more time. Uh, let's uh, look at one more system here, and that is a roller coaster system. And uh, when you have a roller coaster, before uh, you can get going under the influence of gravity, you need to pull the roller coaster to the top of the hill. You need to do work applying a force through a distance. And that work causes a change in energy. It gave the roller coaster gravitational potential energy. Notice at the very top, most roller coasters for a dramatic effect kind of barely creep over the top here. So the kinetic energy is pretty much equal to zero. So but up at the top, the total energy in the system is pretty much all potential energy. But then the exciting part, when the roller coaster comes down the hill and everybody starts screaming, that they're screaming because that potential energy is turning into kinetic energy. So on the way down, you have some potential and some kinetic. At the very bottom right here, there's nowhere else to fall. And uh, if it's in the same level as it started, then there's no more potential and the energy is all kinetic down here at the bottom. Now, we uh, do have to notice something here, and that is that on roller coasters, the next hill is never as big as the previous hill. It's always a little bit shorter or smaller. And that's because this is not a closed system. It really is not a conservative system. It's what we would call a non-conservative system. So the question again is, where did the energy go? And um, we're going to take a look at that in our, uh, in our next video. But for now, we get the general idea that energy, the total energy in a system, if it is a conservative system, is made up of potential and kinetic energy. And those two should add up at any point in time to give you back the total energy. And now, right before it starts to go, it has potential energy. And then that potential energy is going to be converted into kinetic energy by gravity doing work. So gravity starts doing work and converts that energy into kinetic energy. And then it keeps sloshing back between potential and kinetic, and then back to potential, and then back into kinetic, and then back into potential, and so forth as you go round and round the roller coaster. Next time, we can see how James Prescott Jewell found where the energy went. And, uh, but for right now, um, I think we, we're kind of all out of energy. And scratch his parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.